Hi. In my previous two videos, I imported these two meshes and cleaned them up into sort of usable static mesh assets. Uh, but if you actually want to put these meshes in your game and have the player interact with them, like collide with them, uh, you're going to need to set up collision geometry. So uh, if you want to see what the collision geometry of your objects looks like, you can go to the lit dropdown up here, the rendering mode dropdown, and pick player collisions. So what we can see when we switch to that is that the bunny has this sort of, you know, is a polyhedral shape uh, as its collision geometry, and the gear completely disappeared. It has no collision geometry. So if I launch a session and run around in this level, what you'll see is that I can run through the gear completely. The player doesn't collide with it. And the bunny, I basically can't get close to because uh, the collision shape is so coarse. Okay, so the player collision view is one way to see the collision shapes. Another way is to go to the show menu and you can toggle collision on and off and you'll see like a wireframe representation of the collision. You can toggle that on and off with Alt-C. Uh, so you can see there with the bunny underneath that there's lots of space around the bunny where, you know, if you wanted to make this bunny big and have the player walk on it, it just wouldn't be possible. You can't get any closer than those collision shapes. Okay, so what can we do about that? There's two options for collision in UEFN. One is called simple collision. So if I go to this gear and in modeling mode here, I'm going to go down to the volumes tab and I'm going to just use this mesh to collision tool. That's what this video is going to be out about mostly is that tool. Uh, but first I'm just going to ignore all the options and set this set collision type to use complex as simple. So this will configure the asset to use what we call complex collision. So if I click accept now and go back to the player collision view, you see that basically it's the exact mesh. So now the collisions are, would be very precise with the player. You could, you know, walk through all these holes and if you made this really big, walk on each of the teeth. Uh, but complex collision is really expensive. So that's why this one on the left is this simple polyhedral shape. Uh, this is called a convex hull uh, and we call that simple collision. And that basically means uh, that it's much more efficient than the complex collision, but you can only make certain kind of shapes, basically like kind of boxy shapes. Um, there's no uh, concavities in the in that collision shape, which makes it much faster to use in the game. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to lit mode. Okay, so uh, instead of comp instead of the complex collision that's each triangle, I can use these simpler shapes. What kind of shapes are there? So I've got back here a little gallery I made of the different types of collision shapes. So I'm going to switch this back to player collision. So there's basically four types of shapes. There's boxes. So you could have an axis align box or an oriented box. There's uh, collision spheres, there's collision capsules, and then there's convex hulls. So convex hull is kind of like a mesh, but all the faces are flat. Um, and you could think of it as like, I started with a sphere and I did plane cuts, just cutting away areas of the sphere until I got as close to the surface as possible. Uh, so it's kind of a mathematical thing and you can use as more or less faces for convex, I'll show you. Okay, so uh, let's forget about those bunnies and go back to the gear. So if you wanna configure the collision shapes for an asset, um, we have this mesh to collision tool. There's various other ways to do this in the editor, but in modeling mode specifically, you have this mesh to collision tool and what, what, that, what that'll let you do is pick different collision shapes to sort of fit to your mesh in different ways. So there's a drop down here of different types. So this is a, a line box. This is an oriented box. So it kind of finds the smallest box that contains this shape. Uh, minimal sphere contains, this is the smallest sphere that contains this shape. Um, capsule is not necessarily the smallest capsule, but it's a, usually a pretty good capsule. Uh, and then convex hulls. So I showed before the convex hull. So the convex hull fitting option has this uh, option down here to simplify the hull. So if I uncheck that, you see it's very dense in some of the triangles. So those triangles are in areas where it's basically kind of round from the outside. Generally, this is too dense of a convex hull. So we, you can turn on the simplify option and then you can add or remove faces until you feel like it's a decent approximation. Um, 
So I'm going to go with this. There's a few other options in here. I'll talk about them in a second. Um, of different types of shapes. So I'm going to go with this convex hull. So now if I go back to player collision view, you'll see, oh, uh, I didn't change this option down here, back to use simple and complex. Uh, that's what we generally want, or you can switch it to default. But simple and complex is uh, generally what we want. So I'm going to click accept again, go back to player collision, and now you can see I've got a kind of more accurate approximation. Maybe if I feel like this is too coarse, I could go back in, uh, you know, if this bunny was like on a table or something, maybe I would be get away with a box. If it's, if it's bigger, maybe I need more uh, primitives. There's another tool that's related, that's collision to mesh. So that's like, instead of going to player collision view or toggling the uh, collision a view flag on, you can use this collision to mesh to just look at the collision for one uh, single mesh, and you can also use it to convert uh, to geometry. So I can extract this collision shape um, as a separate mesh and stuff like that. That's sort of out of the scope of this vi of this video, though. And then there's inspect collision, which is similar, and it'll show me stuff like the convex uh, shape, how many vertices and faces does it have and stuff like that. You can show hidden lines so you can try and see where the lines are. Um, okay, but so we did the bunny with a single shape. Let's go to the gear uh, and do mesh to collision again. I'm just going to reset these all back to default. So it's a box. Now, this box is not a very good fit for this gear shape. So what I'm going to do is instead of input mode being per input object, I'm going to change it to per mesh component. So what that does is it fits a separate box to each part. So the, the collision geometry for a, a single static mesh doesn't have to be a single shape. It can be multiple shapes. So here I'm fitting a box to each part. Now, I don't know if you if you watched the previous video when we made this part, these pieces are all disconnected and there's some floaty bits and stuff like that. So this is probably too many boxes. If I look down here in the physics data, it says 12 boxes. Maybe I don't need quite that many. So I'm going to change this max count we try three. Now you see it got the kind of three biggest boxes, the front, back, and this one. Maybe put that to five. So now it's got, you know, most of the major pieces. And this is, you know, decent collision shape um, for this part. So now I could switch between the other pieces here. I could switch to oriented boxes. Gets a little better. This gear is still, you know, pretty coarse for that circular gear. Uh, I go to spheres. That's not going to be any good. Uh, capsules, same kind of thing that they're not good shapes for this gear. I can switch to min volume. So what that's going to do is try different options. It still wants a box for that uh, gear there. So there's a few other options in here. I could do swept hulls. So swept hulls basically uh, is like a 2D convex hull that then gets extruded. So swept hulls have the um, same kind of thing. They have a simplify option and then a tolerance. So I can turn this up maybe to like one or let's just drag it up. Higher. And so if I set as higher, it will use fewer and fewer um, polygons for each part. So this is actually pretty good collision. Um, but you can see here at the back that this shape back here is not so good. Um, so I'm going to switch this now to convex hulls, which is another option. So convex hulls now you see, like on the bunny, um, they're kind of doing better and better. Uh, but this is kind of the limit. Right, we could turn the target face count up, but this back piece here is one mesh, and there's no real way to make the convex hull go into those, you know, be a better fit for that shape. So there's another option here, which is max hulls per mesh. So I'm going to switch now back to um, per input object. And then I'm going to turn up this target face count to maybe 50. Um, so, so this is a single convex hull now for the whole shape. That's too coarse, obviously. Um, but what I can do is I can increase this max hulls per mesh. So if I put this to two, what it's going to do is automatically split the mesh uh, into two parts and fit a convex hull to each side. So you can see that now that's got a better approximation. And I can go up here, three. Now I've got the front part, four, and I got one of these back pieces. Let's go right to six. 
Okay, so now it's managed to sort of separate out these back parts. And you could keep going on from here now. Of course, the more hulls you add, the more expensive the collision for a shape gets. Um, so I'm going to stop there. But basically, this uh, max hulls per mesh is a, a really good thing uh, to play with and lets you really uh, sort of get pretty tight fitting collision uh, around around a part, which then you can you know use to make that part sort of playable. Uh, or you, so to build game mechanics based around uh, those parts. Okay, so now I'm just going to set up uh, a quick little scene here uh, and and play it so that you can see uh, these parts being used in game. So at this scale. Uh, this collision works pretty well, and you don't really notice that the player can't go into all the little nooks and crannies as as they're jumping on this shape. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that if you made this part much larger, such that the player should maybe be able to fall through the holes, and now you have a problem because the convex hull can't have holes in it, and that's the kind of situation where you might need to use complex collision uh, to do the game mechanic you're looking for. Okay, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, in the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how to manually create collision geometry in the editor that you can assign uh, to a static mesh asset.